Previously on The Shove It Show. Okay, pretty interesting. I felt like there were some good matches at the start. It felt like certain opponents motivated him more than others. The middle stretch of the run was a bit of a pain to get through. He just wasn't doing that much. I think Pentagon is a good wrestler, but he's a little bit overhyped. Oh my ass! I just can't push this dump out! Said there were some excellent matches in this run, and they were long too, showing that he was trying to entertain the New Age fans as much as possible. Sometimes when I pick my nose, it looks like little versions of the road dog, Jesse James. The final grade for Pentagon Jr. on Ring of the Hawk Season 3 is a B. It was pretty good, but there was room to improve. So yeah, as you can tell from that handy recap, Pentagon Jr. previously got a B on Ring of the Hawk Season 3. But this video is different. How is it different? Well, because this isn't TNA, this isn't Season 3, and this isn't Pentagon Jr. It's Pentagon Dark. I'm not the biggest Pentagon fan, but I did enjoy some of his TNA matches, and his B grade was well deserved. That took place in the year 2018, and today's video is from 2016 in Lucha Underground, so we'll have to see if his style is any different. I've been waiting for a chance to watch some more Lucha Underground, it's always a good time for the Hawk. Today's video was a Patreon request by Brendan. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today. Sorry it took so long. First off, I have to say, apologies that this video is so long. He had 29 matches, so it's hard to keep the length down. I know some of you hate long videos. In order for Pentagon to finish as our first champion of Season 5 and get an A, I'd like to see him get to the point a bit quicker with his matches. Have some in-ring consistency and perhaps a bit more character work. Okay, it's Pentagon Dark. Did he make the ladies bark? The first question that you probably all have is, who is Pentagon Dark and how is he different to Pentagon Jr.? He was Pentagon Jr. for the first two and a half series of Lucha Underground, but then something changed inside of him. Pentagon was due a Lucha Underground title shot against scary monster Matanza Cueto, but the issue is he had fear. So he sought out training with an individual who sent Pentagon into a cave to lose his old character, destroy his old gimmick, and become someone with no fear. So he went into this cave and played with himself in the dark until he found a new gimmick. Oh yeah, and the man telling him to do all of this was Vampiro. We even start of a rare in-ring promo. As usual, the problem is that Penta doesn't speak English. I can still sense this is well-delivered promo in Spanish because it's punchy, almost song-like, and doesn't ramble, and the crowd seem to appreciate it. He admits Vampiro is his manager now and says he'll beat the monster. Match 1, Ultimate Lucha Dos, Part 3, Lucha Underground Title, the challenger Pentagon Dark versus the champion Matanza Cueto with Dario Cueto. Pentagon Dark immediately hits a flip dive out of the ring. Pentagon chokes him across his back with a cable. This is a more violent Pentagon. He hits a Death Valley driver on the floor and pays homage to Vampiro. Matanza tries to respond but misses and hits the ring pole. Pentagon Dark uses a chair now and pays homage to La Parker. This is dominance here. Pentagon sends the monster into a chair pile. The crowd are loving this as Pentagon once again sends the monster into chairs. In the ring for the first time in this match, Pentagon has the monster set up in the corner and he does like a monkey flip into his knees, it's just a two. Pentagon dodges another monster attack and now a backstabber for another two. Dario starts using his magical rock to wake up his monster. That seems to work as the monster throws Pentagon Dark into a chair and follows it with an overhead pump handle suplex. Then the monster goes nuts and does a standing moonsault and a standing shooting star for a two count. He isn't done and hits a bridging suplex. The ref can't count because Pentagon's shoulders aren't down. They get in each other's faces with the masks filtering out some of the bad breath. Matanza hits a move which Stryker calls the Irish Car Bomb. Not sure what to think of that name, it seems a bit insensitive. Cool move though. Pentagon blocks his dive with a chair to the head and he jumps into the ring to hit a Canadian Destroyer. Vampiro arrives at ringside to hand Pentagon a barbed wire bat, but the monster's brother stops him from using it. Pentagon can't break his arm as the monster hits him from behind with the bat. The monster hits his wacky power slam and... Um, what? That's it. Pentagon lost? That seemed like a bit of a waste of time. The crowd chant bullshit. Pentagon and Vampiro seem to have broken up already. Maybe they need to go back into their little cave together. Well that was anticlimactic. I was enjoying it until the finish. I liked the character work from Penta, but the monster overshadowed him in the ring. I think a B is fair for his debut on Ring of the Hawk Season 5. Match 2. Rey Mysterio Jr. vs Pentagon Dark. The match has a fast and frantic start. Ray seems to win the opening portion with a head scissors and a flip dive out of the ring. Pentagon kicks out and starts yelling at the referee. What a dick, it's not his fault you're losing. 
Pentagon hits some strikes and throws Ray into the lights. The double stomp gets him a two count. Penta nails a couple of swing blades now for a two. Ray wakes up in time to hit a top rope Frankenstein which gets him a two. Nice move now as everyone is running around going nuts in the ring ending with Pentagon sliding Ray out of the ring like a seal in shit. Ray kicks him away and tries to dive off the apron with a moonsault. The dive is caught but Ray reverses Penta's slam into a DDT. Ray comes back into the ring with a splash for a two count. Penta is up first from that and he hits the Pentagon driver for his two count. Pentagon manages to evade a 619 and nails a super kick. He press slams Ray into his own knees for a two count. Surprisingly, the crowd chant for Penta to break Ray's arm. He doesn't do that though because he'd rather head out the ring to yell at his former manager. Unsurprisingly, that gives Ray time to wake up and he hits a head scissors into the 619. Ray finishes Pentagon off with a Canadian destroyer. Wow, what was the point in this new darker character if he's just going to lose so much straight away? It seems like a strange decision. Yeah, by the way, Pentagon is a bad loser and hits a power bomb on Ray and wants to snap his arm. It just made him look lame. Enjoyed the match, it's just a shame how he's being booked. It's a C for Pentagon Dark. Match 3, Cortez Castro vs Pentagon Dark. Castro desperately tries to hit Pentagon, but it's not working. Penta drops him on his face in the corner and starts throwing hard kicks. Penta hits a package pile driver and it's over in one minute. Pentagon snaps his arm off as he's been known to do since becoming Pentagon Dark. He cuts another promo bragging about how much of a badass he is. The crowd are still eating it up so he hasn't been destroyed by his debut losses. I still feel like he needed to do a bit more here to look dangerous and get some credibility back. It's a D, not much to say. Match 4, Triple Threat, Pentagon Dark vs... Oh, Chavo Guerrero Jr. and Rey Mysterio Jr. The crowd chant for Rey and Pentagon, but no one is chanting for Chavo. Pentagon throws Rey into a head scissors on Chavo and then Rey snaps one off of his own on Pentagon. Rey bounces off the ropes with an arm drag, but he eats a Pentagon kick. Chavo is sent out of the ring and Pentagon soon joins him out there. Rey flies out the ring with a corkscrew dive. Rey then brings Penta back into the ring and hits a seated senton and a crossbody for a two. Chavo is skulking around with a chair. He takes Rey outside and looks to hit him with a chair when Pentagon flies through the ropes, kicking the chair into his face. Penta kicks Rey and screams some Spanish into the camera. Penta brings the chair into the ring and sets it up in the corner. It's a bad choice as Chavo drop toe holds him into it. He's a non-factor in this match for a while now. He wakes up in the best way someone could possibly wake up, by booting Chavo square in the head. Penta kicks Ray off the apron but he runs into a Chavo dropkick. Chavo gets a 2 on him with a back sent on. Penta responds with a monkey flip code breaker for a 2. Now Chavo reaches deep down to find his inner Eddie. He can only manage to hit 2 amigos before Ray returns to break up the party. Pentagon powerbombs Ray onto his own knee for a 2. Nice work from Ray now to set up Penta and Chavo for the 619, but he only managed to hit Chavo though. Ray is distracted by Chavo, which costs him as Pentagon Dark hits him with the package pile driver, and that's over. Finally, a big win for Pentagon Dark. Unfortunately, Ray beats him up in the post match, and let's be honest, this match was really just about Ray being awesome. It's like I said in my Pentagon and TNA video, he has a habit of getting overshadowed, and that sure happened here. It's a C. Match 5, Aztec Warfare. This is basically like the Lucha Underground Royal Rumble, but pins and submissions only count. Pentagon Dark enters at number 5 to a huge evasion. The cameraman has ADD as the camera cuts everywhere and we miss what he's trying to do. Eventually, we see him suplexing Johnny Mundo into the corner and Sammy Callahan. Son of Havoc gets a couple of sling blades. Matanza beats him out of the ring through the middle rope. Pentagon is gone for a while now, fighting on the outside. Eventually gets in the ring to squirrel for Rey Mysterio once again. Pentagon kicks him all over the place. Now Dr. Wagner enters and he decides to work with Pentagon. It doesn't go well for them and Ray hits a double slingshot arm drag. He also hits a Rana on Pentagon. Once again, he disappears for a while. A jobber called Ricky Mandel enters. Straight away, Pentagon hits the power driver. He wants to break his arm, but can't because some quadruplets enter the ring. One of them dives on Pentagon with a Huracurana. Another hits a Canadian Destroyer. They leave, and Johnny Mundo covers Pentagon Dark for the free. Wow, it's an S. What a joke. Anyway, Pentagon is seemingly more interested in feuding with the man who helped him to discover himself, Vampiro. It doesn't exactly look like he's in ring shape, so what are they going to do? Are they going to have a match or what? Well, if you hate intergender wrestling, you may want to look away from the next few matches. Match 6, Pentagon Dark versus one of the quadruplets from the last match. She is called Doku. I'm not sure what to think. She's actually in the WWE right now as Kari Sani. She isn't sweating Penta and batters him. That is until Penta sends her flying for dropkick. The referee doesn't like that for some reason. That gives Doku a chance to hit a spinning back chop. 
She runs into another pentagon kick and dumps in her thong with fear. Pentagon boots her in the ass and chops her boobs. What a perv this man is. Pentagon dispatches her out the ring to continue the beating. I like that he isn't treating her differently because she's a woman. Pentagon picks her up and throws her into the ring apron. She looks finished. The kicks continue in the ring. I'm enjoying her selling. She tries a spear which is blocked. She tries another and this one actually works. Doku climbs to the top to hit a diving elbow drop. No pin is made, instead she tries another dive. Her elbow drop is sort of blocked and Penta grabs her arm and snaps it back. The ref immediately calls for the bell for her own safety. Surprisingly enjoyable match, it's a C, but he isn't done with this group of females. Match 7, later that same night. Pentagon Dark vs Yuri, who is another Joshi wrestler, representing the Black Lotus Triad. She goes nuts hitting arm drags for a bit. She desperately changes her mind on a dive to the outside before eventually diving from the top with a body block. She beats Pentagon against the fence. She then throws Pentagon into a member of the Believers. Vampira explains that this small woman is dominating a man due to the black magic. She lightly hits Pentagon over the head with a ring bell. It looked overly safe. Penta finally manages to kick her down. She isn't done though and fires back. In the ring for the first time in a while, Yuri hits a running knee to the noggin, followed by another. The third one is sort of blocked and Pentagon crushes her leg. Yuri refuses to tap out as quitting doesn't exist when one is taken over by dark magic. She makes the ropes. Pentagon keeps up the attack on her leg. Pentagon chops her and Yuri ain't smiling after that one. She manages to kick Penta from the ring apron and she dives into the ring with a hurricanrana. She looks to dive once again. This time it's a double stomp but that just gets her a two. She keeps going and hits a crazy round the world DDT. She tries a cannonball dive now, which is flawlessly caught and Penta hits the package pile driver. That was sweet. Penta snaps off Yuri's arm and once again the ref rings the bell. Did Penta get dominated too much here? She was so small and he barely did a thing. Enjoyable watch though, another C I guess? Match 8, straight after the last two matches, Pentagon now has to face Iyu Shirai. A whole episode of Lucha Underground dedicated to intergender wrestling. She doesn't get an entrance, she sneaks up on him with a diving dropkick instead. She quickly moonsaults out of the ring too. What a start. Iu also flies out of the ring with a tope, almost hitting the concrete steps. She grabs a chair and throws it into his face. I like that he hasn't really had a chance to actually get his hands on her, so this makes it more believable. He couldn't have changed anything that's happened to him. Pentagon is sent crashing into a pile of chairs. She rips up the ringside mats with evil intentions. She is unable to lift him up, but she does manage it on the second attempt and slams him onto the concrete. Penta starts yelling something at her as she kicks him. In the ring, Penta finally gets going when he drop kicks her mid handspring. The crowd love that one. Penta starts chopping her. He doesn't seem to be in a hurry here. Big kick to the face now. We head out the ring once again and Jesus, he flips her through a chair stack. That looked brutal. He starts hitting her with a cable now and choking her. I know some people will hate this one and some other people will get some sort of kick out of this one. Now Pentagon decks her with a chair and he licks the chair. Some people in the crowd start giving him grief. Once again, he was sent flying into a chair stack. Pentagon hits a Death Valley driver on exposed concrete. This beating is starting to get uncomfortable as she looks to be crying. Then out of nowhere, Iyu manages to drop toehold Pentagon into a chair. She randomly charges up the steps and appears on a balcony. And holy hawk, she hits a huge crossbody. This woman is insane. She becomes the very first woman to hit the Lucha Underground balcony dive. I was so sad to learn that this is her only Lucha Underground match, and what a match it was. She rolls Pentagon into the ring, who miraculously wakes up. He can't hit the pile driver, but Iyu can as she crosses him with a Canadian destroyer. For the free. Loved it. He made this as believable as he could, and it was his third match in a row. It's an A from the Hawk. He's supposed to also wrestle Black Lotus, the leader of these girls now, but no match happens because Black Lotus locks out the referee and she snaps Pentagon's arm off. These four Joshi girls are hot, man. What an incredible idea from Lucha Underground. I know intergender wrestling is really hateable for some people, but I love these matches. Especially this one. She just hit him with dive after dive after dive, and he didn't really get any chances to just pick her up and crush her. As he had his arm snapped off twice, he's off TV for the next nine episodes. Match 9 will be a first round match in a wacky tournament in the Cueto Cup. It's Arhenis versus Pentagon Dark. The crowd are squirting in their nappy of happiness to see his return. Straight away Arhenis tries a drop kick but he's drop kicked mid move. Arhenis does manage to snap off a head scissors but Pentagon no sells it and sling blades it. Pentagon has no fear and he boots his opponent's head off. They exchange super kicks. 
Pentagon slides out the ring so Arhenis can moonsault him. Pentagon isn't hurt from that one and hits random strikes in the ring. Arhenis slows him down with a nice net breaker for a two. His next move is countered with an overhead suplex into the corner. Arhenis counters a springboard into a cutter for a two. He can't follow it up as Pentagon hits the Pentagon driver. That's just a two. Then Pentagon just wins with the package pile driver. Just a middle of the road kind of match. It's a D. Match 10, second round match. Drago versus Pentagon Dark. It's a similar story to the other matches. His opponent has the flashy moves with Pentagon continuously shutting him down. The countless pinning attempts by Drago makes it a bit more exciting than the last match. Drago hits a brutal blockbuster. It should be over, but it's not. Pentagon eventually catches him with the driver for a two. Drago hits a Frankensteiner to hardly any crowd reaction and a splash for a two. You know, it's just interesting that some wrestlers make people want to cheer for them, whilst others people can barely care about no matter what they do. I'm not sure if that's something you can teach. Pentagon wins with the Canadian Destroyer and a package pile driver. Another D, only slightly better than the last match. Match 11, quarterfinal match. Tejano, the Luchador Cowboy versus Pentagon Dark. Bit of a different dynamic to this match as Tejano is a bigger guy. He hits a nice jumping leg lariat to start us off. Tejano comically falls out the ring which looks really bad and then Pentagon flip dives to the outside. Tejano gets back on top in the ring with a code breaker and a flip dive out the ring of his own. The cowboy does this cool chop and lariat combination in the corner which I've not seen before and he punctuates that with a big kick for a two. Pentagon does a backstabber which doesn't keep Tejano down who drop kicks his head off. Tejano now hangs Penta in the tree of woe and hits a hesitation drop kick. This is a one sided match. Tejano now with a rough rider for a two. Famous B tries to interfere and throw Tejano a horseshoe but misses and it slides to Pentagon. He smacks out Tejano with a horseshoe and just like that it's over. I enjoyed the match but once again Tejano did everything, yet everyone still cheers for Pentagon so I guess it doesn't matter. Pentagon beats up Famous B after the match and snaps his arm, also a cowgirl's arm. It's a C, it was all pretty fun. Match 12, semi-final, Pentagon Dark vs Mil Mutuez with the very sexy Katrina. Man, I missed this chick. A bit like the last match, it's a size mismatch, but even more extremely. Pentagon grabs Mill's arm and throws kicks to the ribs, followed by drop kicks. Then Pentagon sends Mortuez out of the ring and nails him with a flip dive. Mill eventually gets tired of Pentagon and choke slams him. He carries on the power moves of a TKO on the outside of the ring and a pounce in the ring. Pentagon randomly wakes up and tries to package power driver, but he's not strong enough. Pentagon does manage an Inziguri and a code breaker for a one count. His next move is countered with a power slam for a two. It's a pretty one-sided affair. Pentagon eventually hits four super kicks and one to Katrina to knock her off the ring apron. Penta dives into the ring with a double stomp and that's the three. This actually did make sense as Mil Mertuez was apparently going into this one with damaged ribs. Not as crazy as I'd hoped for, but still enjoyable. It's a B. Match 13, Cueto Cup Final. Prince Puma vs Pentagon Dark. Despite this being a final, it sure doesn't feel like one. The match is in the middle of the show and starts during an advert break. Weird. Puma hits the first big move with the bat breaker. He also hits a beautiful flip dive out the ring. It's a frantic pace to this one, no time to hang around. Penta hits a backstabber and a couple of stomps. We get a double down after a bunch of kicks and knees. It still doesn't feel like a final should feel. The fans want Pentagon and not Puma. Puma continues to outpace and he hits a 619 and a flying crossbody for a two. Puma tries a head scissors now which is switched into a nice pentagon backbreaker. Puma blocks the driver and hits a spin kick. Then a suplex without release into a brain buster. Pentagon's getting his mask handed to him here. Puma looks to hit a dive but misses it. Once again Pentagon can't hit the driver and he gets arm dragged. Puma tries to springboard him but finally Penta can hit his driver. Just a two count. The Canadian destroyer doesn't get the job done either as Puma rolls out of the ring. He's up straight away with a kick off the apron into a springboard destroyer of his own. Second double down of the match. They both make it up at 9. Puma spits some chewing gum at Penta so he kicks him. They both reverse each other's moves for a bit and Penta tries to create some distance but gets caught out on the top rope. Puma meets him up there after a battle and hits a Frankensteiner. Once again Puma climbs and this time he's uninterrupted and he hits the 6.30 back sent on. That's the free. Once again Pentagon has failed at the last hurdle. This was really good, but it wasn't anything incredible from Penta. It's a B, a point off for failing again. Match 14, Medallion Match, Dragon Azteca Jr. vs Pentagon Dark. Both guys apparently have broken each other's arms, but if you ask me, they're both pretty armless. The bell rings and Penta hits a drop kick straight away. The match moves along and as usual Pentagon gets overshadowed. 
First with a crazy dive to the outside and secondly a diving huracarana off the stage. Dragon brings him back to the ring with a diving crossbody. Pentagon is floored with a bunch of kicks but the dragon still can't put Penta away. This is the first match so far where the crowd don't want Pentagon to win. Pentagon manages to kick in mid handstand and hit a double stomp. He can't stay on top for long as the dragon does a lovely DDT counter for a two. He tries another DDT which Pentagon swishes into a backbreaker. The dragon tries to fly once too often though and he's caught on the top rope and hit with the package pile driver. That's the three. I can't help but feel like the wrong guy won here. This win qualifies Pentagon for some wacky match and the Gift of the Gods title. It's a D. Match 15, seven way match for the Gift of the Gods title. Paul London versus Malasur Day versus Saltador versus Cortez Castro versus Drago versus Son of Havoc versus Pentagon Dark. He's the only one here who gets his own individual entrance. Saltador is an interesting luchador and he gets rid of Pentagon quickly with a funky head scissors. Paul London looks like one of the flying Elvises. Suede does a bad looking crucifix pin which more looked like Pentagon was trying to Samoan drop him, but he wasn't. Pentagon hits him with a driver but the pin is broken up. Dargo is in now hitting a running net break at Pentagon. He's gone for a while from that one. It's actually silly how long he's gone for, has he fallen asleep or something? Five minutes pass before I see him again. He drop kicks Son of Havoc. Pentagon dodges a double team attempt and throws Saltador overhead onto Paul London. He quickly hits the fear factor on Saltador and another to Paul London. At the same time, Son of Havoc dives on Saltador with a shooting star. It's ruled to be a double free count, even though Havoc had his opponent covered way earlier. Dario Cueta says they must now face each other to decide the gift of the gods champion in a ladder match. This match was an S. Not only did he fail once again, but he wasn't involved in most of the match. Match 16, Ultima Lucha Trez. Ladder match for the Gift of the Gods title. It's Son of Havoc versus Pentagon Dark. Surely this should be a good one. Havoc goes running with the added acrobatics and flies out of the ring. The match then slows down as they're moving ladders around. It seems quite early to be doing this, but it's eating up so much of the match. If they wanted to have five ladders in the ring, why not start the match with the ladders in the ring? It seems too obvious, perhaps. Eventually, Havoc does a handspring back elbow to knock Pentagon into the ladder. He follows that with a springboard crossbody. Once again, furniture is rearranged now, including a chair. Havoc throws him into the chair. It didn't feel like that was worth wasting the time over. Havoc now uses the chair to hammer a ladder into Pentagon's nutsack time and time again. God, this match is slow. Pentagon hits Havoc off the ladder with a chair like he's a piñata. Very appropriate for a lucha promotion. Ugh, the match stops again, so Pentagon waste ages setting up a table. Penta cautiously climbs up a tilted corner ladder, only to get backdropped through the waiting table. The ladder is placed on top of Pentagon so Havoc can slowly climb to the top. He tries a shooting star which Penta sort of counters into a cutter. Another break from the action now so Penta can fetch some more chairs. Havoc is outside the ring and a ladder is set up but Penta ignores that and runs through the ladder attempting to hit a dive. Havoc clubs him in the head of a chair. Son of Havoc now sets up a chair bridge. He tries to suplex Penta onto it but he can't manage that. Instead Penta fights him onto the chairs and hits the pile driver. For some reason, Penta still doesn't climb the waiting ladder. Instead, he sets up another structure. Havoc is set up on the table, but the time wasting allows him to recover. They fight on the ladders, and Pentagon eventually just throws him through a table, and that's that. Pentagon finally wins a title. A second tier title. This match was a massive anticlimax. It was really poorly thought out, and no psychology whatsoever. Even Havoc disappointed me. It's a D at best. Match 17, Ultima Lucha Trails Part 4. Prince Puma has just completed in a grueling 18 minute match and captured the Lucha Underground title. But Lucha Underground manager Dario Cueta is a known dick. He says there's going to be one more match for him tonight. The challenger will be Pentagon Dark. So is he a hill now? Well the crowd certainly don't hate him, they love this man. To be fair, the gift of the gods title is essentially like a money in the bank briefcase. Dario Cueta also rules that the loser will be fired. What a dick. Pentagon snaps off his opponent's arm straight away, but the match continues with a damaged Prince Puma. Puma misses a moonsault off the ring apron. He does recover though and hits a couple of suplexes and a standing shooting star for a two. Lots of nice reversals now. Puma eventually hits a Canadian destroyer and throw into a kick. Surprisingly, just a two. Puma attempts a 630, then Vampira appears at ringside and pulls Penta away from the 630. What is this crap? Penta has sold his soul to the devil for the second time. Penta hits an extra nice pentagon driver but it's not over, so he just picks him up and does a running package pile driver and that is the free. Well, he's finally won the big one. The match wasn't great but at least those last two moves had more to them than usual. 
And he won the main title, so it has to be an A. It's Ring of the Hawk rules. That's just the way I do it. Shove it if you don't like it. Match 18, Aztec Warfare. The last Aztec Warfare didn't go well for Pentagon, so let's hope for better this time. The champion enters at number 7. He gets a huge ovation. He sling blades every man. Everybody's favourite, Joey Ryan, has handcuffed himself to the ropes, but then he frees himself and attacks Pentagon. Pentagon isn't worried about him and hits the driver straight away to eliminate Joey Ryan. Then Tommy Dreamer arrives. In the meantime, Pentagon eliminates Jesse Goddard with one super kick. Pentagon and Dreamer have a face off. Pentagon has no fear despite getting hit of a kendo stick. Dreamer puts him in the tree of woe and drop kicks a trash can into him. Now Mari Pulsa has the kendo stick. Pentagon's taking his lashes in this one. He tries to dive out the ring but catches another lash from Dreamer. Dreamer and Pentagon fight up into the bleachers. Pentagon spears him on the step, which for some reason is covered in dumb tacks. Pentagon brings him back into the ring and hits a double stomp. That eliminates Tommy Dreamer. That was well booked to be fair. That was the least offensive Tommy Dreamer match I've ever seen. A wrestler tries to give Pentagon a pizza slice. Pentagon doesn't eat pizza and he hits a driver into the pizza box to eliminate Vinny. Hernandez is here and he tells Pentagon, shut up or I'll slap you one. Pentagon retaliates with a kick and snaps his arm off and surprisingly Hernandez is done. Pentagon is dominating this match. Son of Havoc charges at him and rolls him through to a double stop which is just a two. He tries to follow it with a head bounce cutter which Pentagon flawlessly turned into a backstabber and Son of Havoc is done. He stands alone in this match for a moment. Next out is Johnny Mundo, he won't be so easy. Johnny misses a dive but he's able to hit a standing Spanish fly for a two. Mundo's twin enters next so Pentagon is in a handicap situation. They nail a front slam suplex combo for a two, but then the twin is distracted by a doll which tells him he has to fight Johnny Mundo, so that ends the double teaming. We get a rare exchange now between Pentagon and Phoenix. He drop kicks Mundo and arm drags Penta at the same time. Phoenix also hits an insane dive out the ring onto Mundo and Pentagon. Mil Mertuez looks like a real force when he enters, but he doesn't actually last long. Penta is gone for a while having a rest, and rightfully so. He returns against Sammy Callahan and surprises him with a driver to eliminate him. Ugh, Chavo Guerrero is in now and he eliminates Phoenix. Chavo dives onto Penta out the ring. King Cuerno also hits a dive on Pentagon. Gives him more chance to rest on the outside, I guess. As the Moth enters, there are no more people left to join the match, so Penta has definitely made it close to winning. The Moth eliminates Johnny Mundo. Cuerno eliminates Dragon Azteca, so now we have the final four. Pentagon is awake now and starts kicking everybody. Unfortunately, he springboards into a knee in the face. Chavo eliminates Cuerno with the Gory Bomb. Despite that, he's randomly eliminated by a simple Pentagon kick. Your final two is the Moth and Pentagon Dark. Pentagon distracts him and chops him in the chest. Pentagon tries to rally some late energy, but instead he runs into a TKO for a two count. Marty stomps his head into the map for another two. Pentagon tells him he has no fear, which is a bad choice as Marty bites his hand. He hits a crazy double underhook DDT, and I'm not sure how that isn't the free. Marty dumps in his nappy of anger. Penta catches him with a kick now and lands the Canadian Destroyer followed by a package pile driver. That's over. Really impressive stuff, loads of eliminations and he battled for half an hour. It's an A. Match 19, Lucha Underground title match, the champion Pentagon Jr vs the monster Matanza Cueto. Good match to have as Penta couldn't beat this guy last time they faced off. The match starts straight away on the outside. Penta keeps sending him around the outside but it will take more than that to hurt the monster. Matanza slams him on the apron and hits a big punch to the head. In the ring for the first time, the monster carries Pentagon around and slams him. The overhead pump handle gets the monster a two. Penta suddenly wakes up with sling blades. The champion can't hit a pile driver and the monster headbutts him. Pentagon dodges a move in the corner and hits a backstabber and a code breaker. He's shocked that it's just a two, not sure why. Pentagon has no fear, but his springboard dive is caught and turned into a spinning back suplex. Pentagon wakes up from that and tries a Canadian Destroyer, but he can't hit it. Instead, he hits an Inziguri. Pentagon climbs the ropes and hits a dive into a Canadian Destroyer, quickly followed by another Destroyer. He grabs him again and hits the Fear Factor for the free. It was alright, it gives Pentagon's title reign a bit of legitimacy, but nothing we haven't seen before is to see. Match 20, Lucha Underground title, Brian Cage the challenger versus Pentagon Dark. Cage hits Pentagon off the apron during his entrance. After lots of brawling on the outside, Cage slams him. Most of this match seems to be on the outside. Cage ties Pentagon's mask to a wall when he boots him in the head and smacks him 1-2. He tries a chair shot, but somehow Pentagon frees himself. He starts running around going nuts on the outside. In the ring for the first time, Pentagon hits a double stomp from the top. 
It's too early for the pile driver on Cage and he knees him in the jaw and hits a big gut wrench face buster. Brian Cage picks him straight back up and buckle bombs him. He also suplexes him for the middle rope, but all of that is just a two. Cage motions that it's over, but it's not over as Pentagon hits the backstabber into the code breaker. He wants to dive and can't manage it as Cage stops him and drops him on his face. Pentagon's not dead and he starts kicking Cage and suddenly hits two Canadian destroyers. The fear factor ends it for him. Almost the same as the last match, except more boring. It's a D. Match 21, two on one handicap match, Brian Cage and King Cuerno versus Pentagon Dark. It's supposed to be a normal tag match, but nobody wants to tag up with Pentagon. He's just too dark and evil for anyone to be his friend. Pentagon does well despite being against the odds. Cage clotheslines his own partner by mistake and starts getting sling blades from Penta. A rare flip dive out the ring from Pentagon now. Pentagon starts running up the steps to celebrate, but he turns around and he's barged over onto the concrete. Cage suplexes Pentagon back into the ring. Cuerno hits a diving splash and Cage hits a diving elbow, but somehow that's just a two. After a long and slow match, Pentagon hits Cage with the diving Canadian destroyer. The heels start double teaming. Cuerno hits a sort of tombstone, but nobody is in a rush to win this one. He walks off holding a deer's head. Cage hits Penta with the press power slam and that's the three. Guess he should have been nicer to people so he could have had a tag partner. It's an S, almost nothing to say. I just filled my nappy of spray. Match 22, Lucha Underground title. Last man or machine standing. The machine Brian Cage versus the man Pentagon Dark. They're not hanging around here. Cage hits an early slam on the outside. He half pulls off Pentagon's mask. That annoys Pentagon who smashes a bottle over his head. Cage and the commentary team completely no-sell this. Cage grabs another bottle and smashes it so he can carve Pentagon open. Cage introduces a table. He tries to powerbomb Pentagon into the corner table. Pentagon fights out of it and nails a Death Valley driver through the table. Pentagon mashes Cage in the head of a chair and hits a diving stomp on the chair. The match continues being insane as Cage suplexes Pentagon out of the ring for a table. Pentagon manages to make it up at 9. He fights back with a chair on the apron. Another insane spot now as Pentagon lands a Death Valley driver through the table. Again, we get a 9 count before Cage is up. Somehow this fires Cage up who lands a huge discus clothesline and the drill claw. The next big move is Pentagon hitting a Canadian destroyer for a table, but yet again Cage pulls himself up. He knees Pentagon in the head and tries to powerbomb Pentagon through chairs. He can't manage that as Pentagon drop toe holds him into the chairs. Our hero hits the package power driver through the chairs as the whole ring shakes. He realises that Cage will probably get up again so he isn't done and he pilmanises Cage's arm and also snaps it back. He still isn't done and he snaps Cage's other arm complete with comedic snapping sound effects. To be snapped! Cage is still stirring from that so Pentagon stomps his head into some bricks. The brick to the brain gets the job done and Pentagon wins. Great match and any match where brick is the finish is an automatic A from the Hawk. Match 23, Lucha Underground title match, the champion Pentagon Dark versus Super Mex Hernandez. There's actually a really funny promo exchange between the two. Pentagon speaking English is rare. It somehow makes his threats funnier. Pentagon quickly hits a head scissors on the outside of the ring. He throws Hernandez into a chair pile. He does miss his double stop back into the ring, gets hit with an Air Mexico from Hernandez. Hernandez hits a dive out of the ring. When this guy was in the mood, he was great fun. Pentagon tries to get going but runs into the tree and the tree wins. Hernandez hits a shoulder breaker whilst flipping him off. Penta then manages a lucky kick and starts hitting sling blades. He tries to slam Hernandez from the top but gets his ears boxed and Supermax hits a splash for a two. Hernandez tries to dive into the ring now but he gets a big kick to his meathead. Suddenly Pentagon hits an almost botched Pentagon driver and it's over. I enjoyed this one for sure but I think it was due to Hernandez, whatever it's a C. Match 24, Lucha Underground title match, triple threat. The challengers are King Cuerno and Mil Mertuez. Pentagon and Cuerno try to work together, but Mertuez is too powerful. He starts clubbing Penta in the corner. Cuerno tries to stop him, so comically, Mil Mertuez makes him join Pentagon in the corner and clubs them both together. The other two eventually wake up and double super kick him and drop kick him out of the ring. Penta flip dives into Mil Mertuez. Cuerno hits a tope onto Pentagon. Mertes then starts dominating again on the outside. He tries to remove Pentagon's mask, but instead it's sort of torn in half. Mill throws him over a fence into the crowd. He returns just in time to break up a pin. He looks so funny and crazy at the same time. Penta hits a double stomp on Mertes for a two. Quino returns and knees Pentagon in the head. The slam connects, but Mill Mertes breaks up the pin. Pentagon now hits a botched backstabber on Mill. 
He's embarrassed, so he does it again. The fear factor to King Cuerno ends the match. It's a C. But just like the way Pentagon won the title, someone else is here to cash in their Gift of the Gods title straight after this match. Match 25, Lucha Underground title match. The challenger is Marty the Moth Martinez. He decks Pentagon with a belt and hits, I guess, a double arm DDT. The Moth ties Pentagon's mask to the ropes. I've never seen Pentagon look so rough. He looks like a piece of trash. The Moth rains down on him with punches, but he still can't get a free count. Pentagon is able to hit the Canadian Destroyer, but unfortunately the Moth flutters out of the ring. Randomly, gothic Chelsea Green enters the ring and she kicks Pentagon in the nutsack and hits a pile driver. The Moth flaps back into the ring and does Pentagon's package pile driver and that's the free. Wow, that sure seemed like a strange choice to beat Pentagon. Not much to say, it's a D. Match 26, four-way number one contenders match. King Cuerno versus Mil Mertwes versus Dragon Azteca Jr. versus Pentagon Dark. Mil clotheslines every man down straight away. He hits a DDT on Pentagon. This is a dominant start. Pentagon hides on the outside for a while, recovering and waiting for his moment. His moment seems to be kicking Cuerno in the head. He can't follow it up as Dragon Azteca hits him with a crazy DDT. Dragon Azteca gets distracted by Phoenix and leaves. We haven't seen much of him in this run. I thought he'd be on Pentagon's ass this whole episode. King Cuerno topes out onto the remaining two guys. Milmertuez stops Pentagon getting back into the ring, but he's jumped by the Mac. Penta takes advantage of the distraction, hits Canadian Destroyer on Mil Mertuez, and just like that, it's the free. It's also an S. A short, forgettable match. Match 27, singles match. Chelsea Green, who is going as Reclusa versus Pentagon Dark. I guess Pentagon is a big fan of intergender wrestling. Reclusa watches his entrance and dives on him from the middle rope. He cowers in fear as they arrive in the ring. She looks taller than him too. On the outside, Pentagon is slid into chairs and Reclusa cannonballs into it, but Penta catches that and picks her up and power bombs her into the apron. Soon she's sent flying over more chairs. Pentagon hits a big kick in front of the Believers. They love this man. In the ring, Pentagon tries a power bomb, which is switched into a head scissors. She drop kicks him away from the ring and dives down on him with a hurricanrana. She isn't done though and flies out the ring again with a tope into a DDT. That's only getting her a two count. She manages another two off a DDT. I didn't expect this match to be so closely fought. Then Pentagon randomly hits the driver which Reclusa kicks out of. She escapes the package pile driver and hits a pump kick. Her attempted dive is stopped and Pentagon hits the pile driver on the ring apron. What? How is that only a two count? Reclusa slowly gets up and boots Dark in his pentagons. The flip pile driver only gets her a two. She spends too long screaming to herself and she's hit for Pentagon backstabber and the package pile driver for the free. Wow, he really struggled here and got completely overshadowed. He got Sonny Siaki's ass handed to him. He did make Chelsea Green's offense look strong, so I don't know, it's a D. Match 28. Well, the landscape of Lucha Underground is sure changing. Sierra Mado match for the Lucha Underground title. The challenger is Pentagon Dark versus the champion Marty the Moth Martinez. It's basically a no rules match. Martinez is busted open very early on. He hip tosses Pentagon through a table. He now uses a kendo stick. He also has a lunchbox and inside the lunchbox is beef jerky. He spits the beef jerky out of happiness when he sees a fork. Wow, I didn't expect such a hardcore match here. Most of this one will need to be blue. Marty tries to make Penta double D double die with a jump off the apron. Penta is covered with trash and Marty hits a chair on the pile over and over again. Penta rises up from the pile and gets on a desk and throws a chair into the moth's face. Then he dives with a Canadian destroyer on the outside. Marty recovers and puts Pentagon in a tree of woe trash can. He smacks the can with a barbed wire baseball bat. The audience smile with happiness. Marty is also smiling as he covers Pentagon in petrol. He takes too long smiling at the lighter as Pentagon kicks it away. Marty does still have his bat, but he's a dumbass and swings it into the ropes and it bounces and hits himself in the face. That old chestnut. Pentagon throws him for a table on the outside. How are these men still standing? For some reason, a glass window is round to be waiting on the outside. The moth flies through the glass like there's a light bulb on the other side. In the ring now, Pentagon has chairs and he sets up a chair bridge. The fear factor through the chairs ends the match. Pentagon is once again the Lucha Underground champion. Don't get too excited though. Best match so far. It was great to see something different finally. It's an A from the Hawk. Vampiro hands his student the belt. Then he promptly boots him in the nutsack. For fuck's sake, can these two either fuck or fight? A mystery man rushes the ring and hits Penta with a chair. He hits a crazy dive as Vampira reveals that he's his new master. Then Jack Swagger, the Gift of the Gods champion appears. Oh no. 
Match 29, final match. Lucha Underground title match. Swagger has cashed in his title. For some reason, they've added a voice synthesizer to the mic when Shagger talks, presumably to try and make his lisp sound scary. Straight away, he puts on the ankle lock and Pentagon passes out. What a title reign that was. It's an S. Game over. What a way for it to come to an end. It's clear from this video that the fans enjoy chanting for Pentel de Sierra Mado and his antics. His personality overshadows his in-ring work. Half of the roster could probably put on a crazier match. He doesn't do the crazy dives or the fast-paced Lucha Libre. That's not really what he's about. It felt like this run improved in the second half when there was more variety of his matches and his opponents. He definitely does better against larger men who he can do more unique work with. He was booked strongly and was a champion and at times he was the face of the promotion. I just feel like too many of his matches were the same and considering the exciting environment that he was in he didn't really excite me too often. The fans were obsessed with him though so he deserved his place on the roster. I was torn on where he finishes for Ring of the Hawk Season 5. Should it be a B or should it be an A? Let me know down in the comments. You decide for the Hawk. I'll let you know how you voted on the next episode of Ring of the Hawk and if you don't leave a comment your girl will conceive a baby and it won't be from a stalk.